Welcome, welcome, welcome to our broadcast today. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jerry Svell, and I have a great message for you today, and I believe it's going to inspire your faith. I'm going to take you into a live service where I was teaching on how you can make the prophetic word your world. And I want to share with you some important principles that I believe, praise God, is going to cause you to experience what God wants to happen in your life. You know, God gives us prophetic words so it helps create vision. The Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. Now, listen to this verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. It says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Despise not prophecies. Let me read it from the New International Version. Do not put out the Holy Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Contempt means lack of respect. Test everything, see if it lines up with the Word of God, and hold on to that which is good. So notice here, the Apostle Paul, by direction of the Holy Spirit, says, do not treat prophecies or the prophetic word with contempt. In other words, lack of respect. When you hear the prophetic word, take it in. Just say like I do, Lord, I receive that. And then determine that you're going to fight for it until it comes to pass. Now today, we're going to talk about how to do that. So you watch very closely now as I take you into our service here at Heritage Faith Christian Center. And I want to encourage you to take notes if at all possible. Then I'll be back in a few moments and we'll share some very special products that we have available for you. Watch now and I'll be back shortly. Last week, I talked to you about the prophetic word becoming your world. The prophetic word becoming your world. I want to continue on that theme and remind you that our prophetic word this year, days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. Amen. Say that with me. Days of glory, days of, glory. Days of flourishing, days of glory. and days of abounding. Days of abounding. Now that's what God wants happening in our lives. Amen. He wants that prophetic word to become your world. Right. Can you say amen? amen? Now let me just briefly go over some of the things we talked about last week uh, for the benefit of those of you who were not here and also for the benefit of of, of just a matter of uh, making sure you got it, praise God. In Acts chapter 3, and I'm going to uh, read it from the New International Version, beginning in verse 24 and verse 25, Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many have spoken, have foretold these days. Now, this is what Peter stood up and said that crowd shortly after they had been baptized in the Holy Ghost in the upper room. And he's out there with that crowd wondering what's going on. And so he says to them, <clears throat> the prophets from Samuel on, they spoke and they saw and foretold these days. So what the prophets, beginning with Samuel, talked about and prophesied, Peter is, selling, uh, Peter is telling them that today it has come to pass. Yeah. In other words, the prophetic word has now become your world. That's right. Say that with me. The prophetic word the prophetic became, their world. became their world. And then he goes on to say, and you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant made with your fathers. So the prophetic word is designed by God, obviously, to come to pass. It's not just words. It's something that God desires to come to pass in our lives. Hallelujah. And of course, there's been prophetic words spoken uh, about our day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, the word that the Lord gives us each and every year. Uh, we are to take that word That's right. Come on. And, and, and do what we've learned in the word of God. And we'll go over some of that this morning. Do what we've learned to do from the word of God and cause that prophetic word to become our world. Amen. In other words... God wants you to be able to look back at the end of this year and be able to say, that's exactly what happened to me. Amen. It was days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. Can you say amen? amen? Now, how many of you believe that's what's going to happen to you, praise God? 
Say it with me. My world, my world will, be will be days of glory, days of, glory, days of flourishing, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. Days of abounding. Okay, now let's, let's look at some things this morning. And, and uh, I want you to go first of all to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, verse, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Because I'm going to say some things this morning that you've heard before, most of you. I've been preaching some of the things that I'll be saying to you this morning. I've been preaching for 49 years. Verse 12 says, Wherefore I will not be negligent, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet or necessary, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So Peter's saying, even though you've heard these things from me before, and many of you are established in them, it's my responsibility, as long as I'm in this earthly tabernacle, to keep reminding you of them and keep you stirred up about them. Yes, Amen. Because it's quite possible you have allowed some of them to slip. The writer of the book of Hebrews says that, lest these things slip. And, and the body of Christ is guilty of that. We've all been guilty of that from time to time where we learn things, we become established in it, and uh, we know to do it, and, and we've done it, and we've seen results, and then for whatever reason, we just quit doing it. And it may not have been a conscious decision you made, but, you know, sometimes you just get caught up in the things that's happening in the world, uh, get to watching the news too much, get to reading the newspaper too often. <laughs> you know, I like to read the newspaper. I really do. Uh, I look at the sports. I want to see what's going on in my world. Amen. But if I happen to read the front page and, you know, a couple of other pages there, my attitude is I'm redeemed from that. I'm redeemed from that. And I'm redeemed from that. Let's get on to something important, sports. Praise God. Amen. So, Sometimes you can spend too much time yes, sir. dealing with worldly things yes, that you let spiritual truths slip. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. So let's see how that the prophetic word can become our world. And it's, and it's built upon basic principles that we've all heard, yes. we all know, many established in, but are you still stirred up about it? Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. And I want to read verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. I want to read it to you from the message translation. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. Now, the prophetic word is a promise as well. Not only what we see in the written word, but the prophetic word also comes as a promise from God. In fact, uh, the Bible says, uh, men of old were moved upon by the Holy Spirit and, and, and gave voice to what, what God desired, what God wanted to do in people's lives. Amen. So it became, when they spoke it, it came as a promise. But they had to hold fast to it in order for it to come to pass. So the Bible says, keep a firm grip. Everybody say a firm grip. Firm grip. Reach over and grip somebody's hand and grip it firmly. Amen. So notice here he says, let us keep a firm grip. Grip somebody's hand again with a firm grip. He says, let us have a firm grip on the promises. Now, how many of you grip the promises firmly? Like you would shaking somebody's hand 
you know, like a man's supposed to shake hands. He said, keep a firm grip on the promises. Why? So Satan can't steal them. So no one can deprive you of the fulfillment of them. Keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. In other words, they motivate us. They keep us on track when it looks like nothing's happening, when it looks like nothing's working. What I've got is a firm grip on the promise, praise God. And I'm not going to let go of it because God always keeps his word. I think you ought to give him a good shout for that, praise God. God always keeps his word. Now, if you know what God has promised, and how would you ever know what God has promised? It's in the book. Amen. Read the book. All the promises of God are yea and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you know what God has promised, then you can rest assured that he will bring it to pass. But your responsibility is keep a firm grip on it. It's not if it happens, it's when it happens. Can you say amen? amen? Isaiah 55, 11, you're familiar with it, but I'm going to read it to you from the message translation. The words that come out of my mouth will not come back empty handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. Every promise of God has an assignment. Amen. If you find a promise from God, and you'll find many in this book, think immediately, that promise has an assignment. And that assignment is come to pass in my life. Say it with me. Every promise promise has an assignment. assignment. And that assignment is come to pass in my life. life. So if God has told us that we are going to have days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding, and you keep a firm grip on it, and that promise has an assignment on it, you ought to be shouting right now in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every promise that God gives has an assignment. And once again, that assignment is to come to pass in our lives. But it's our responsibility to keep a firm grip on the promise. I know it's difficult. And I know that it's all, it often looks as though it will never come to pass. But you can't give up. Amen. You can't give up. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you can't give up. up. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 through 18, and the message translation says this. When God made promise to Abraham, he backed it to the hilt, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I will bless you with everything that I have. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham stuck it out and got everything. Everybody say everything. Everything. Not some things, not a few things, but everything. Hallelujah. God promised Abraham things that in the natural were impossible, but Abraham stuck it out and he got everything that God had promised him. I don't know what you plan to do this year, but I'm going to stick it out. Just like I do every year. I'm going to stick it out, and my year is going to be days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you want everything that God has promised you? Then make the quality decision that quitting is no longer an option. Now, that's something you've heard me say. If you've been going to this church very long, if you've been under our ministry very long, you've heard me say it time and time and time and time again. I've had people ask me over the years, many times, what do you believe your assignment is? And I always say the same thing. Talk people into winning. Talk people into winning, praise God. Hallelujah. That's that's why I preach. Talk people into winning. So you have to make the quality decision that quitting is no longer an option. And the way you begin this, now here's where we get back into some basics, some 
things that you've already heard, you know, some of you are established in. But Peter said, as long as I'm in this earthly tabernacle, I'm going to keep telling you these things to keep you stirred up. Look at your neighbor and say, you look like you should, you could use some stirring. <laughs> Amen. So the way you begin this, are you ready for this? Some of you are not going to like it. Some of you don't want to hear it. Watch your mouth. <laughs> oh, Brother Jerry, give us something deeper. It don't get any deeper in your mouth. Watch what you allow to come out of your mouth. You can't be talking days of glory and days of flourishing and days of abounding and at the same time, same time talking lack, defeat, failure. James said, my brethren, you shouldn't have, you know, bitter and blessing coming out of the same mouth. Cursing and blessing coming out of the same mouth. So you have to make the decision to put a guard over your vocabulary. Because you can't talk any way you want to talk anymore. Not unless you're not interested in having God's promise fulfilled. Amen. So one of the first things I learned, you know, in 1969 when I came into this, and, and you know, I, I came into it as a res result of hearing Kenneth Copeland. And um, I, I didn't know the power of words back then. I had to learn to put a guard over my vocabulary. But the first thing you have to do is replace it with God's word. That's right. You can't just do this standing in front of the mirror and say, I won't talk negative, I won't talk negative, I won't talk negative, I won't talk negative. <laughs> You can't do this with mind power. You can't do this with just positive thinking. It takes the Word of God. You got to reprogram your spirit because Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what's ever in your heart in abundance, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. Brother Hagin used to say, uh, you know, I don't need to spend all day with the person to locate their faith. Give me five minutes. Just listen to what, how they talk. And in five minutes, I can locate their faith. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. Yeah. And if you come to church every week and you're hearing me or Justin or somebody else talking about the prophetic word that God has given us, and then you walk right out of this building and, and, and go to talking you know, to somebody on their way to the car. You know, that's great, but it never happens to me. I wish it happened to me. You know, I, I don't know what's wrong with our family. We just, we just never have good things happen. We just located you. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's like, you know, people that, that, that use foul language. Uh, you know, I was in an elevator one time with John Osteen. We were at Kenneth Hagin's camp meeting and we were going up to our hotel room and, and we just come out of the service, you know, and man, the anointing was so strong and we're talking the word, the sermon that Brother Hagin preached to one another. Then the door opened and some other guys got in and, and they were talking filthy language and, and cursing and, and it, was like, it was like somebody just threw a, a wet blanket in the in the elevator. It just, you know, the atmosphere changed. And so John just stood there with his arms folded and they were saying, GD this and GD that, you know, and, and uh, John said, hey, Brother Jerry, I noticed these guys have God on their hearts. <laughs> they keep talking about him. You know Jesus? And boy, all of a sudden, I don't know what floor they wanted to get off on, but all of a sudden the next floor was the one they wanted to... And all, all John said was, I hear, you, I hear you talking about God. Maybe you're interested. You want to know Jesus? And boy, they got off that elevator as quick as they could, and the atmosphere became wonderful once again. <laughs> praise God. But the, what really got them off the elevator was, now we know what's in your heart in abundance, John said. Wow. 
Now we know what's in your heart in abundance. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I was standing with Brother Copeland one time out at the airport uh, in his hangar. And uh, we were talking airplanes and some guys came up and, and uh, they went to using foul language. And, and uh, you know, then all of a sudden one of them said, oh, Brother Copeland, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk like that. And he said, yes, you did. Now, you know, Kenneth Copeland, he don't pull any punches. <laughs> you know? And he said, yes, you did. No, no, preacher, we're sorry. We, if we'd have been thinking, we wouldn't have been using that kind of language around you. He said, yes, you intended to use that. And he said, uh, well, why do you say that? And he said, because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. You can't help it. That's the way you talk all the time. And that's the way you talk in front of me. And when you leave here, that's the way you'll be talking then until you replace what's in your heart. Now, how many of you are familiar with Babe's Restaurant over in Burleson? And they got one, uh, you know, we've taken there, you know. And uh, we're over at Babe's one time. We took some folks over there and we're sitting at the table and we've, we've ordered our food, you know. And the four more people came in and the, the tables are real close and they put them right next to us. And when the man, one of the men, there was two couples, one of the men, when he, when he was walking to the table, he was cussing. And when he sat down, he didn't quit cussing. And he just went on and on. And finally it got, you know, repulsive. And I, I turned and looked at the guy and his wife was shaking her head you know, she was embarrassed by his conversation and, and it just filth, just filth. And, and finally she said, why don't you shut up? If you, can't, if you can't talk without cussing, why don't you shut up? He, he, he did it so often. That's what his heart was full of. Amen. That he didn't even realize it was coming out of him. That's exactly the way most Christians are. Yeah. They're so full of unbelief. They're so full of doubt. They're so full of failure. They're so full of defeat. They're so full of sickness. They're so full of lack. They just talk it all the time. And if you try to correct them, well, what did I say? Yeah. Hello? How I many of you want God's best? Then folks, it begins with your mouth. Glory to God. Now, I've heard people say when I start preaching about the mouth and words again, oh, we got to go back to watching what we say. <laughs> I always say, why did you ever stop? Yeah. Why did you ever stop watching what you say? You're going to use this revelation for the rest of your life if you want God's best. Come on, give him a shout whether you want to hear it or not. Your faith is the title deed to God's promise for the things you are believing to receive from Him. In the inspiring book, Life of Faith, Jerry Savelle shares from the Word how it's impossible to please God without faith. Learn how to release your faith and see beyond your present circumstances. Because living by faith is not a suggestion, it is a biblical command. If you can conceive it, you can receive it. In this powerful three CD teaching by Jerry Savelle, you will learn how victory and success start on the inside. The Holy Spirit is the artist, God's word is the oil, and your heart is the canvas. Don't wait any longer. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request this life-changing package, including the book, Life of Faith, and the three CD teaching, If You Can Conceive It, You Can Receive It. Discover how to live by faith, to overcome the world by faith, and to be the winner that God has called you to be today. I want to thank you once again for watching our broadcast today, and I really pray that it's been a great inspiration to your life. You know, I count it a great joy to come to you each and every week, sharing the lessons that I've learned myself, that I've applied for over 49 years now, and praise God, they're still working in my life. God's no respecter of persons. If you become the doer of the word, like I did 49 years ago, then praise God, you're going to get the same results. I want to remind you once again of our special offer. Uh, this book, The Life of Faith, I wrote this 
a couple of years ago, and I'm telling you, we get great testimonies from it. And then right along with it, if you can conceive it, you can receive it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It all begins on the inside. You see, the Holy Spirit is, is designed to take God's Word and paint an image of it on the inside of your heart, the canvas of your heart. And then once you see it on the inside, no devil can take it away from you. So our special resource package this week, the Life of Faith book, and if you can conceive it, you can receive it. Now, once again, uh, I, I've been doing this for the last few weeks. 2,000 prayer requests that I have in my hand right here. 2,000 prayer requests that people have written in, wanted us to pray, join them in their faith. And as I looked at some of them uh, again this morning, and I've already prayed over them, I see that the number one request is for financial breakthroughs. Number two is healing. And then number three is relationships, uh, restoration in relationships. And I believe that God is in the restoration business. He wants to restore families. He wants to restore marriages. He wants to restore finances. He wants to restore everything Satan has stolen from you. So if you fit in that category and you're believing God today, I want to join my faith with you right now. And I say in the name of Jesus, God will restore. Say that with me. My God will restore. I'm believing God with you and I'm expecting breakthroughs. I'm expecting turnarounds. I'm expecting you to have a great testimony. And when it happens, notice I didn't say if it happens, when it happens, I want you to take the time to share your testimony because as I read these testimonies, it inspires other people and many are believing for the same things you're believing for. And when they hear that God is doing it for somebody else, it inspires their faith to keep believing God. Here's one from Joanne. She said, I listened to the message you preached on the God of suddenlies uh, before going into a job interview for a new job. She says, within three days, I was hired on the spot. I am sowing my first full check as a first fruit offering. And I believe in God, according to Mark chapter 10, verse 30, that I will receive a hundredfold on what I've sown. My goodness, Joan, that is an amazing thing that you have done. Sowed your first whole check into this ministry. And you're right. Mark chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said, whenever you give for the gospel's sake or his sake, you can expect a hundredfold return. I join with you for that hundredfold return in Jesus' name. And Joanne, when it happens, please let me know, okay? Thank you for joining me again today. We'll see you next week. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.